Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech channel. And this is a channel where we teach people how to use desktop technology to make things, to create, to innovate. Because in the remarkable world we live in today, you can buy manufacturing machining equipment that was thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for just hundreds of dollars today. And you can use it in your study, in your kitchen, in your garage, in your basement. Now, if you look behind me, you see that I really like making vases. Um, I find them very rewarding. I think they're very, very practical. They make wonderful gifts. Uh, the challenge is, though, that normally when you print a vase, you use a setting in your slicer called vase mode. And what that does is print a single wall all the way up. And because it's printing a single wall in a spiral action, it prints very fast. But vase mode vases are very, very thin and squishy. They're not very strong. And most of the time, they don't even hold water very well. So one workaround is if you happen to have a printer with a 0.8 or one millimeter nozzle, this was a one millimeter nozzle, you can print very strong solid vases, but it requires you change your equipment. You change the nozzle and learn how to use a larger nozzle. So is there a way to get the beauty and speed of this vase mode print that's very thin with the strength of a larger nozzle. This was printed on the same printer with the same nozzle as this print. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. This video is a continuation of a series of videos about Cura covering more advanced topics where we look at the parameters and settings in Cura in quite a bit more detail. If you're new to 3D printing or new to slicers or new to this process in general, you're gonna to wanna to start by clicking on the playlist up in the corner and watching some of the introductory videos about 3D printing, about CAD computer-aided design, and about slicers, Cura, and other slicers. And if you wanna make sure you hear about all of the videos that are available on this channel, please subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, give us a thumbs up, which helps YouTube know that people appreciate the videos we're making on this channel. Now, let's start by talking about a vase. A vase is obviously just a hollow object with a bottom and sides and generally no top. Also, it's a box. There are many other shapes you can create that have these same characteristics of a bottom, sides, and no top. And any object with those characteristics can be printed in vase mode on a 3D printer. But before we look at that, let's just look at how you create an object like this. Well, generally you create it in a computer-aided design program and you can use any of them out there. But just to give you an idea, we're going to look at an example here in FreeCAD very, very quickly. So if we turn to the screen, we'll see here that I have a very simple vase. This is in essence a cylinder that is hollow and it has a bottom, it has sides and no top. Now in FreeCAD, much like many CAD programs, the way you do this is by starting with a cylinder. So I did in FreeCAD is I created a cylinder, which consists of creating a sketch and extruding it or expanding it up. Then there is a built-in function in FreeCAD to hollow it out. And when you hollow it out, you specify the size of the outer wall or shell. Now I picked a size for this model of 1.2 millimeters. Why? Because the nozzle of my 3D printer is 0.4 millimeters. And that would mean that if I create a wall of 1.2 millimeters, it's exactly three lines in my nozzle. So let's go ahead and assume we've saved this already, which I have, and we're gonna open it up in Cura and see how long it'll take to print this very simple container. Here in Cura, we're going to go ahead and open up the hollow cylinder that we created. 
and we can see it here on the screen. And then we'll go ahead and slice that. And we're going to click on Preview. And let's scroll up these parameters so we can see. And we'll see that this is going to take over three hours to print. Why is it taking so long? Well, if we zoom in here, we'll see that there's an outer wall, there's an inner wall, and then the final inner wall. And they have all these little pieces of fill inside the model, depending on where you are in the model. Well, all of those individual little segments require a lot of travels. Those are the blue lines here. If we turn travel off, you'll see those go away. They require a lot of travel, a lot of retraction, because when you start and stop in a model like that, it's going to retract the filament. It just takes a really long time. So let's look at an alternative, and the classical alternative is that we load in a solid cylinder. And we go down here to Special Modes. And we select Spiralized Outer Contour. And that's going to select the option to smooth the contours automatically. We slice it. And this is going to print now in one hour and two minutes. And you'll see here now that we have a single wall that we're printing. And if we move this over here and we look at what happens, we can see that it's literally going to print a single wall and then move up to the next layer and print another single wall and move up and print another single wall again. So that's wonderful, and this was printed on my Ender 5, which is a bit of a Frankenstein-type uh, printer because it has a new motherboard, it has a Micro Swiss Direct Extruder Hot End, it has a reinforced metal nozzle, so it's not a typical Ender 5, uh, but it's, this is a beautiful print. Um, I could not find any defects at all in this print but it's not very strong. You could probably hear it crack there a little bit. This is not gonna be very good. I want something strong like this. So let's think for a minute about this. This is printing a single wall with no infill. Well, and it took about an hour to print. Well, what if I turn off Spiralize and I manually set all the settings that in essence Spiralize is going to do? So I go to walls and let's set it to 0.4, which would be a single wall. And then I go to top bottom and I say that the top thickness is zero. I leave the bottom thickness on. Now Cura turned yellow here because it's warning me this might be a mistake, but it's not, we know what we're doing. And then I go here to infill and I set the infill to zero. So I have no top layer, I have no infill, I have a single wall. Let's go ahead and slice that. We can see it takes an hour. And in essence, if we watch it, we're going to see that it's really doing basically exactly the same thing. So we've now found the magic of vase mode or spiralize mode. So really in any slicer, you can just set these parameters manually and obtain a sliced model. Now, one of the things I'll notice on this model is I can't see a seam at all. So let's think about that as we do our next experiment. Now, what if I just add more walls? Well, we'll go here to walls and I'll make this 1.2 millimeters thick, which would be three lines. That's what I specified when I created this manually. Let's go ahead and slice it. Now we know it's gonna take longer because there are more walls, but 12 minutes longer. Not very much longer at all. And I end up with this model. And so, in essence, I can create 
a vase in pseudo vase mode and now it's very, very strong. But there's one problem. It ends up that when I have multiple walls like that, and you might not be able to see it here from this angle, but when I look at this just the right angle, I can actually see the seam here. Now it's not terrible. It doesn't look terrible, um, but I can see the seam. So I thought I'd try to get rid of the seam. Well, how would you get rid of the seam? Well, tell it not to start each circle in the same place. Let's see what that does. So if I go over here and I search for seam, I'll see there's a option called Z seam position. So instead of putting it at the back of the model, which is what user specified was, if we go back here, we'll see I'm putting it at the back of the model. I'm going to put it in a random location. Let me slice this model. Now, the first thing I'll notice is if I zoom in, there are all these little white dots. That's each place that the printhead has started a new sequence. So because I've now made it random, those are moving around. And so if we actually watch this print now, and let's go over here and turn, make sure travel is on, You'll see those blue lines, those are travels. Watch what happens here. So I'm going to go and print a layer and that layer is gonna print multiple times because there are three lines in my wall here. So that's the second line. And now the outer wall, which is the third line and watch what happens next. Now I traveled to a new location. So it stopped about here and then it traveled back to here. Now, each one of those travels takes and creates one of these white dots. And in fact, if I look at the print that was printed that way, once again, it'll be hard to see, but I can feel it here. You can hear it. Hear those dots? Whereas if I rub on here, it's smooth. So those dots actually formed imperfections in my model. And if I look inside of this model, there's a bit of stringing. Why? Stringing is caused by travels. So what did we learn here today? Well, we learned that you can use a solid model in vase mo using vase mode. You can print a beautiful model. Whoops, I just broke it because it's so thin. But if you want to do it manually, you can do it manually by defining no fill, no top, the number of walls, and get a very strong print that has much of the speed of vase mode. Well, folks, I know this was a much shorter video than the ones I normally did, but I hope you learned something. If you did, please click on that bell so YouTube knows you're interested in my videos. Subscribe to the channel, recommend it to your friends, and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this video and let's continue to learn things together.